this week's show, we'll talk about the PRI and the buzz that BSpec had on the show floor. We'll talk about the Daytona test coming up for Grand Am, and we'll finish the show up with the question, is Ford going to have a team in the WRC this year? Welcome to the Insider Report. Welcome to this week's episode of the Insider's Report. I'm Errol Tucker. Joining me on this voyage as usual in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida, Peter Keene, and in Los Angeles, California, Bill Wood. How you doing, gentlemen? Wonderful. Is this a fantastic voyage from the 70s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're just coming back from the PRI, and uh, we did uh, two episodes at the PRI. It was a fantastic event. Um, a lot to see, and uh, more so, a lot of people saw us. Uh, we were broadcasting from the Mazda Cooper Tire stage at the PRI, had a lot of uh, interesting guests, uh, a lot of people uh, watching the show over the internet as well as at the PRI itself. Good deal, guys. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Tucker. We had, that, that, it was, as I go back and look at all the different segments we did all weekend, there were some pretty impressive guests you had on, you know, from NASCAR oh, yeah. and, and, you know, really all the major series and manufacturers. So, I, I mean, it is impressive if even, you know, for me to go back and look at it. And, so it was a good deal. And, and all that stuff's available the, uh, on the uh, on the website, yep. GoRacingTV.com. Uh, just go to the homepage there and click on video programs and you'll see the Go Racing TV segments. Go there and look at them and uh, you know, get caught up if you didn't have a chance to see it while we were uh, while we were doing it. Or if you want to show it to a friend, if you were on them or just share them, you can do it there. It's incredible stuff. Yep, it was a who's who of motorsports, so. But uh, more so, you know, there were a lot of stories, a lot of things uh, going on there. And I think, uh, gentlemen, one of the big stories out of the PRI uh, this year was B-Spec. We've been talking about B-Spec over the past couple of weeks, but uh, B-Spec was in full strength there at the PRI, you know, just uh, beside the stage there. We had the, uh, the Fiat B-Spec car, the Honda, the Mazda, uh, they were all lined up there, and then... Uh, uh, Peter, I believe that uh, um, Irish Mike and your guys had uh, a B-Spec Ford out in the lobby. So B-Spec cars were all over the place. Yeah, we definitely, I mean, um, there was the Kia, the B-Spec Kia was also there in the lineup and Ford had a Fiesta and, you know, in the Ford booth. And then um, Irish, uh, PRI was nice enough to let Irish Mike park one of his new Ford Fiestas out in, uh, out in the lobby. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, the, the other guys didn't want Irish Mike's b-spec car in there to stink theirs up but anyway it was <laughs> it was parked in a good location but you're right it was there was b-spec cars everywhere and you know b-spec seemed to be the buzz we had a really good meeting thursday afternoon and um i was kind of shocked i think there was probably 40 or 45 people there you know from different sanctioning bodies and just competitors that are interested in b-spec so um that really and looks interestingly like interestingly enough each each one of those B-Spec cars had a Go Racing TV sticker on it as well. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I definitely Well, noticed. I'd expect that from a kid from New York City running around <laughs> tagging everything he can. Yeah, I think that so, I think before we go forward, I think we should understand that it was the insiders who broke the story. It was Peter that helped write the rules, and uh, yep. the, the insiders that broke the story. We've been talking about it for months, and now the entire motorsports world is talking about it. It's going to be a part of the Grand Dam program and Continental Challenge. It's going to be uh, part of World Challenge. It's going to be part of uh, SCCA. It's going to be even at the F1 race, right, Peter? Is that possible? In well, Canadian uh, touring that's, car. That's the, most, that's the most impressive. You know, John Bondar, the owner of the Canadian Tire Touring Car Series up there in Canada, um, he is all in. And, you know, I had a great conversation with him. I don't remember if it was Thursday or Friday, but he's like, I'm the czar. It's my money. I'm all in. So he, he thinks he's got 25 or 30 B-spec cars that are going to race in the Canadian Tire uh, Championship. And the cool thing about his schedule is that he's got two major weekends. The B-spec cars will race in front of the Formula One crowd at, at Montreal, and they will also race at the nationwide Grand Am weekend at, at Montreal. So plus, I mean, if anybody's been to Three Rivers that road race weekend at Three Rivers, I mean, that's a major oh, yeah. party. They come from all over. So he's really got three we major, there, uh, major weekends. 
Yeah, we were up uh, at, at Troy Riviere this year when uh, Go Racing TV was uh, covering the Pro Spec Racer Ford Series, the SCCA Pro Spec Racer Ford Series. And let me tell you, those folks and those fans up in Trois Riviere, they're unbelievable. It, uh, it's really a great event. If you guys ever get a chance to go out uh, up to that event, I definitely suggest it. You know, but oh, there's, wow. there's always conversation about what can Americans do to become equal with uh, Europeans, especially in road racing. And this is a perfect example. We all hear about F1 and the WRC and, and uh, Le Mans series, but in Europe, they have a lot of these kind of, of small entry level championships. And this is the, uh, we're, we hear about ladder programs, the Mazda ladder program. We hear about ladder programs in American racing, and the B spec is going to fit into a number of categories. So, people that want to get started in racing, this is a way to do it. Excuse me. The well, and, and yes, Bill, the, you know, with our segment, well, you know, we had Joe Foster on one of the insider shows there, you know, from Patrick Dempsey Racing. I don't really know who Patrick Dempsey is, but anyway, <laughs> Joe Foster seems to run that team. And you know, I was talking about meeting Charles Espinlove at the B Spec test, and I didn't want to use B Spec. You know, it was more about Joe Foster. I was just kind of pumping up how impressed I was with the talent of of Charles Espinlove, and and. You know, here's Joe Foster, you know, Dempsey Racing, a G, you know, Grand Dam GT guy goes, oh, he's like, oh, yeah, that B-Spec thing is going to be great. You know, I mean, so it, it's it's spread. Even, you know, major, you know, professional teams know that B-Spec is coming and support it. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It, and Mazda announced, uh, you know, their whole B-Spec uh, package, their kit. So um, it looks like that uh, that's coming out, and I believe Honda is coming out with theirs shortly as well. Yeah, the, Honda, the Mazda uh, kit, the excuse HP. me, Errol, the Mazda kit was only $2,600. That price yeah. just floored me. You could spend $2,600 on bandwidth trying to find those pieces. So, right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an incredible... It's an incredible opportunity for people that want to get started in racing to do that. Right. You know, I mean, it's going to you got to buy a new car and put these kits on it, put a cage in it, and you don't have fifteen or less than sixteen thousand dollars involved in the whole thing. Well, so the I, other important, the other interesting fact I think is that you know these series are running B spec classes and B spec races. I know World Challenge and, and Grand Am, but yet. Uh, for the first year, there's not going to be a championship in these classes. They want to uh, attract the folks out there and not put the pressure of a championship uh, scenario uh, in the first year. And they're, and they're trying, the pro guys are trying to keep it. I don't know how John Bondar is going to do it with the Canadian series, but, uh, you know, Grand Am and World Challenge are trying to keep this as entry level amateur guys. So, I mean, that's, that, I think they're going to have to tweak that a little bit. But, you know, honestly, that's, that's, you know, commendable for the first season that, you know, they're just going to try and keep it entry level guys or new guys into the professional racing ranks. So good deal. Good deal. And then I just right, guys, wanted, we're gonna... I, I wanted to mention one other thing, Earl's Irish Mike did sell one of his cars at the PRI show and it went to uh cool. Let's just say it, it went to an interesting group. And when that becomes public, um, people are going to kind of take note that there is a lot of traction with B spec. So that, that's, that's news to come, but we did sell one of the cars and it's, uh, it's a pretty prominent group that bought it, and for a, you know, for a different reason. So, there's good Sounds stuff good. to come. Good deal, good deal. All right, gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll come back uh, with more. We'll be back after this. Hey, Mario. Hey, what do you got in this thing? Uh, 16 valve, 2.4 liter engine. 200 horsepower. Uh, air conditioning. 32 valve, 3.5 liter engine, 650 horsepower, air conditioning. Honda builds every IndyCar engine. It's our commitment to racing and engineering. The same engineering that goes into the all new Civic, the official vehicle of the IZOD IndyCar series. Welcome back to the Insiders. So we just spoke about B-Spec before the break, and now we're going to jump over to uh, the Daytona test that's uh, gone on this week, and uh, I guess some changes in the Daytona Spirit of Daytona driver lineup. Well, I don't know about changes. There's definitely uh, there's an addition of Richard Westbrook to the 24-hour. So 
I mean, Spirit of Daytona's Corvette's going to be strong as death for the 24 hours. There might be a little bit of changes. There's some AMLS con uh, conflicts, and they're just kind of looking at that. But um, essentially for the 24 hour, I think it's Juan Magnuson, Westbrook, Ollie Gavin, and Antonio Garcia. So if, if Spirit of Daytona can't get it done with those four, I mean, I don't know who else you're going to get, you know. But um, yeah, there's probably a there's probably a dozen Le Mans victories in exactly. amongst those four people. Exactly. So you know, yeah. if they can't do it, they need to uh, pack it up and try something else. Exactly. Top guns and a new car sounds and then, like an interesting. You know, Tuesday and Wednesday is the Daytona test. At another Daytona test, and the cool thing about that is, um, you know, hopefully it won't be the media frenzy it was for the first test, and you know, now Spirit of Daytona can start working on their car exclusively. Um, Action Express will have their two Corvettes, Coyote Corvettes there. And then I also know SunTrust has got that, you know, Delara Corvette chassis. So that'll be interesting. It'll be two different chassis, both with uh, Corvette bodywork. Um, I have seen a picture um, of the Red Dragon of the Gainsco car, but I'm not sure if they're going to be there. I guess I can report back that next week if the Gainsco car shows up at Daytona. But um Anyway, the the Gainesco car will be a Riley, but um, definitely yeah. let us know. The other cool thing that. that's going to be at the test is you know, Good. Uh, <laughs> bringing back NASCAR. Mikey Waltrip's decided he's going to run a Ferrari in the twenty four hours, so I think they'll be there testing. And so the uh, uh, Asentado with the A Motorsports Ferrari will be there tomorrow, and then also I think I believe one of the Audis um, GT cars will be there as well. So there'll be some cool stuff at Daytona this weekend. Or this week. Good deal. Good deal. Um, you know, the other news, I guess, you know, going back uh, to PRI stuff, because, you know, that is the, uh, the, the biggest trade show of the industry and uh, a lot of news, a lot of announcements there is that, I guess, uh, Trans Am is kind of going the way of World Challenge, and it looks like they're going to be doing their own marketing for their series. They hired John Claggett as the president. And, uh, you know, I had uh, good conversations with him, and uh, they're doing some things to, I think, uh, kind of tap into the old world of uh, their, 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 their old fan base or their original fan base. I shouldn't say old, their original fan base. And um, it seems like they're, they're moving uh, forward with uh, a plan to bring uh, Trans Am back. Excellent. Well, and I mean, uh, we've talked about this before, Tucker. This is kind of, you know, I mean, I, there was no... There was no SCCA club backing to just fund these pro races. So, I mean, I think they're trying to, SCCA pro is trying to go back to what they do best. And that's, you know, to put on these events and then, you know, do the technical support and, you know, the officiating and, and not try and get into the marketing scheme. We don't, the SCCA doesn't seem to do marketing, or especially pro racing marketing very well. So, um I think it's getting, you know, it's going to what their strengths are. Let SCCA put on a professional event and, you know, tech the cars and do that, you know, tech compliance and that kind of thing. And then, you know, let marketers go be marketers and yeah. try and get money. Do all the support stuff, registration, exactly. so on and so forth. Yep, exactly. So. Exactly so. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see some good things. I know that uh, several of their dates are put together. From what I understand, they are still working out uh, the, the second half of the dates, but um, they, uh, they apparently uh, are, are putting Lime Rock uh, on, the, on the schedule. They'll be going to Brainerd this year, from what I understand. So, you know, some of the old uh, regular um, tracks, but then uh, they're... they're Try, trying to venture out to uh, to bring some new and, and, tracks in as well. So it should then, be very you know, interesting little, over you know, the next couple of weeks. Jim Durhog, they're getting a little bit more um, liberal on what they class to. They're kind of spreading out. You know, I mean, always Trans Am's yeah. going to be that TA1 cars, you know, the two, two frame, 750, 800 horsepower Detroit Iron Rocket ships. But, you know, for the lesser classes, they're trying to branch out and trying to, you know, bring some of them other marquees home. So, I mean, they're working hard at trying to make that Trans Am deal successful. You know, the, the yeah, I think you know, in order to get car counts up, in order to kind of go with the times, they're they're you know trying to bring in some other classes that, that will uh, basically uh, bring life back into the series. And, and it's a small yeah, the heyday move. of Trans Am was when they had the the fast cars 
at the front, and then they had the uh, 2.5 liter cars where the the right. Datsuns and the and the BMWs and the Alphas were racing against each other, uh, and that had something for everybody. And hopefully, they can get back to yep. that because it might be something that's a little different than what's already out there, and that's the uh, World Challenge and uh, the Continental Tire Series and uh, things like that. And then I got another little bit of insider information you. for you there, Tucker. Um, your favorite driver, the other Tucker, the real Tucker, Scott Tucker, has gone out and purchased two 99... <laughs> <laughs> Went out and bought, purchased two 997s because he's going to run that TA2 DL. So, um, you know, he's getting prepped to... He's going to run gonna the, do what? the 997 Porsches in the TA2. So, um, so you know, ah, okay. just to make sure you keep up with... I know Sounds you have this poster on your wall So at, at night. So. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes, I look at it every night. So, gentlemen, we're going to go to break here. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk about some news out of the WRC <laughs> and Ford. We'll be right back after this. Club an amateur racer. Here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our club racer and autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. Welcome back to the Insiders. So um, there seems to be some interesting news out of the WRC, and uh, I'm going to throw this right over to Bill. Bill, uh, is there going to be a Ford on the grid this year, uh, a Ford uh, factory-supported uh, team? We hope so, certainly, and I, I think it has to be that Ford wants to have the world stage. Uh, Citroen is already there. Uh, uh, Volkswagen is going to come on board. Mini, these are all people that they fight with to sell cars with. So I, they have to be there, but their contract with M Sport, the uh, program that runs the pro that runs the rallying, uh, it ran out this year at the end of the season, and uh, they're trying to they're stuck on some uh, element to get it back uh, going again to renegotiate the contract, uh, but that's going to come to a head in about a week, another couple days. Uh, they if it hasn't been already when we we're recording this, there was no contract. I talked to Yari Mati Latvala uh, this morning, and he is the is going to be the lead driver. He said that they were still talking, but they have to report to the FIA what cars are going to be official points getters, the official factory cars. That has to happen early next week. I think it's Monday or Tuesday of next week, and if so, they have to have a decision made by then. I would think. Um, and it, it, another note that I heard from uh, Latvala was that his contract is not with Ford, it's with M Sport, and that runs out next year. So if, uh, you know, if they don't sign something with Ford, M Sport has to go back and, and decide what it's going to do and uh, what Latvala is going to do about uh, a ride this year. At the end of the season, he was the fastest guy in the series. In fact, Loeb, who won his eighth championship this year, was saying uh, in the last two or three events, I can't keep up with him. And I don't think that was just a, a nudge to a, a friend. Uh, he was outrunning Loeb, especially in uh, Great Britain. The conversation I had with him that will be on my webcast this week is that uh, he got a lot of confidence in on the pavement in France and especially in Germany. And when they got to, um, or Spain, excuse me, Spain, and when they got to uh, Wales and Rally Great Britain, he had enormous confidence. And when his teammate Miko Hervinen, the number one driver on the team, went out, he felt like he could go for the win and he got it. And uh, even though uh, Loeb, you don't win eight championships without having an ego. And he turned up the wick a little bit and just couldn't find him until uh, ultimately Loeb had a problem so, and left. 
So, you know, the, the season is going to be starting up soon. When does the season actually start for the series? Because it I, starts you know, in. It sounds like some decisions really need, need, need to be made if they're going to well, be ready. Well, yeah. I mean, that's uh, at the uh, June, uh, I think, se- or January, excuse me, January 17th, I believe, is when Monte Carlo starts. Monte Carlo hasn't right. been on the World Rally Championship schedule for a couple of years. It's been part of the Intercontinental Rally Challenge, the IRC, that's going to be back in the World Rally Championship schedule. That starts, I, I believe, is January 17th uh, or somewhere along that line. So, yes, by December 12th, you have to report to the FIA. So if, if we're going to have a team, for example, Go Racing TV needs to let the FIA know that we're going to be in the championship next year. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll organize that and see what we're yeah, going to do. We could go, to, we'll go back decisions. to Mazda and Cooper Tire. I'm sure they're willing to spend $30 million to travel around the world. <laughs> there you go. There we are. Tucker could write All right, that gentlemen, up. I think that's going to wrap this show up. You think? Uh, you think it's going to wrap it up? I, well, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. I guess uh, – if Peter doesn't hijack well, it, it was interesting doing the show live with the th- all three of us in one place for a change at the PRI. That was an interesting element. Well, <laughs> that was. The, the, the one point I just want to make is, you know, everybody knows the board of directors met at Topeka this weekend. And so uh, once again, they never cease to amaze oh, yeah. me. What's that? I said, oh, yeah, big news. Exactly. They never cease to amaze me. And I think, honestly, they made the, the most – the best decision they've ever made in the in the least five or six years anyway, but they, they're going to let ST Light become, Super Touring Light become a national class for 2012. So that's amazing news. I never thought they would do that. And um, so that's really and, and good. Then they counteracted that great decision by making another, another interesting decision. Yeah, the other interesting decision is that the, they're going to put me back on the CRB. Um, <laughs> and I guess I guess uh, Jim Wheeler, the new chairman, must have had to do some horse trading there. I don't know if he bought him. I don't know what he traded for, for that. I I still don't believe that either. Good but deal. anyway, congratulations. Yeah, so we can still that. we can we can still be insiders since you'll be the you'll be the insider here. <laughs> I, I guess so. So <laughs> cool, cool. All right, gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this show. Folks out there, remember, as always, you can tune in to Go Racing TV for all your club racing pro-am video needs. Don't forget to jump on the site and take a look at our coverage of the PRI show. Uh, Some fantastic interviews over the course of those three days up on the Mazda Cooper Tire stage. Also, don't forget to tune in to Rob Kreider's video vignettes of what happened at the 25 Hour of Thunder Hill, the NASA event. You know, we had a reporter out there. We were really busy uh, the past weekend. Had, uh, you know, a full team on the stage of the uh, Mazda Cooper stage at the PRI and then we also had Rob Kreider out on the uh, on the left coast so we were taking care of the right and the left coast all at one time until next time folks remember you take care